So the bail to handstand is a D if it comes from a handstand or a hang and ends in a handstand on the low bar. I'm going to give you a, a, just a little bit about the technique to expect on a, a bail here. If entry from handstand, initiate with a pike or a planche to decrease acceleration into the long swing forward. That was a very nice example of a nice clean bail to hand. The expectation for amplitude is always up to two tenths on uh, major release elements, but on the case of high to low bar, I don't really expect a lot of hip rise uh, on this element. It is possible. I mean, they could release and, and soar straight up in the air and have a, a death-defying vertical drop to the low bar, but I don't really expect that. All I'm trying to do is get from one bar to the other. But I expect enough rise so that they can fit a whole straight body in, so, so that they can arrive in a straight handstand without a, a hip or a shoulder angle that straightens out after the fact. Here is just a little example of what I mean. Here she doesn't hang on long enough so she has the shoulder and a hip angle upon arrival because she didn't quite get high enough and that straightens out after she arrives. That's what I would call an amplitude deduction and there's no way that I'm coming up with two tenths in an amplitude deduction for that type of error. And I'd like to say a few things about the B and C bales. If they are greater than 20 degrees past vertical upon arrival, they get a C if it came from a handstand or a D or E release. It is a B if it came from a hang. That's all there is to it. That shouldn't be difficult to try to remember what value to give those skills. The amplitude expectations of the B and C bales is that they catch at horizontal or above. So in both of these cases, they're fine. Uh, the one thing you are not allowed to do is have a hip angle. You should have a straight line from the shoulder to the toes, no bent hip. On the straddle backs, they are a D if they come from a handstand and arrive in a handstand. They are a C if they came from a handstand and arrive more than 20 degrees from handstand but you do not get an angle deduction for those. It is a C if it did not come from a handstand, but it does arrive in a handstand. And it is a B if it did not come from a handstand and it did not arrive in a handstand. And again, the amplitude in this case uh, for the straddle backs is the height over the high bar. They are allowed a hip angle in this case, um, but no shoulder angle. So a straight line from the hands to the hips and then the hips can be up. Uh, what we're looking for here is that we have inversion. The hips are rising as they're turning over, as opposed to just a flat straddle back where they just uh, skim over the bar with uh, in a sitting position. So we've got that inversion factor. That's what we're looking for for the amplitude on these straddle backs so that are, are Bs or Cs. So we're going to see 11 flight elements Five of them will be bales and six will be straddlebacks and you need to record the angle deduction and the value part.
Okay, and just uh, another note on amplitude of the straddleback. A couple of these, uh, number seven in particular, uh, achieved their final position well after having arrived on the low bar. Again, just as I mentioned in the bales, uh, achieving the final stretched out position well after the fact would be considered an amplitude deduction. We are now moving into single bar releases. We're going to start with hop grip changes to handstand. Uh, we don't usually say much about this particular type of release element. In my mind, I don't even think it should be categorized as uh, release elements fulfilling the special requirements uh, because it's really just a technique to change your grip. We're not expecting like two tenths in amplitude or anything. They don't expect a, a big high flight phase as long as they change their hands. That's pretty much it. So they're kind of different than what we expect on our, our major releases. So the requirements to get credit for a hop grip change is there must be a simultaneous release of the bar with both hands. They have to finish in a different grip. And you can imagine if we allowed a uh, just a cast a handstand hop and then continue the routine with the giant swing, for instance, and decided to call that a major release and fulfill the event requirement, uh, we had to draw a line someplace. Hence, they need to finish in a different grip. And it occurs on the upswing and must be completed by vertical with the hips extended. We no longer use the description of visible flight in our description. I don't know why, but I would assume if they have simultaneous release of the bar with both hands, that there will be visible flight. There should be some daylight between uh, their hands and the bar. If there isn't, and they just roll their hands over, or roll the wrists over, that would not fulfill the requirement. So. If any of the requirements are missing, it receives the value of the root element, if applicable, um, probably a B for a cast hand standard or a giant, and it is not considered a flight element, so no special requirement given. And you as a judge have got to be sharp on this one too. If you blink and you miss that little release and change of their hands and all of a sudden they're swinging the wrong way, how do they get into a grip to, to swing forward out of a cast handstand? You don't know, did she uh, reverse her grip uh, before she cast it or did she reverse her grip on her kip? Or did you just miss the flight phase? It could be significant because because it is an event requirement and it can also have connection value being a C release. You have to be sharp on those. We're going to see 10 clips and you need to decide which meet all the requirements. You'll view it one time in regular speed and then once in slow motion where I'll give you the answer in a caption.
Okay, if you notice those last two did not have a different grip, but the ninth one, that swing hop half, because she goes to the same grip, it is not considered a flight element, but it is a turning C. It's a giant swing with a half turn, which means it is still eligible for connection value. And it meets the uh, level 10 requirement of uh, a C element with a half turn. And, and then the last one, the uh, hop full, that has uh, some merit in its, of its own being a, uh, a more difficult skill. We give it an E release. It has the same grip it returns to, but we recognize it for what it is, a fairly difficult release skill. So now we are going to move into our single bar big releases. We're going to start with a counter flight or reverse hecht. The entry can be from a back swing or a backward circle. It can be a, a giant swing entry as a D, a clear hip sole circle, stalder, circle or a clear in bar circle. All those close bar circles are E's. The clear in bar is not listed in the code, but it would be if that's what it was. We will just look at those entries. The giant swing entry is the only one that's only a D. The clear hip entry is an E. It is called a Hindorf. And the toe on entry is an E. It is a Ray. And the Stalter entry is a Rikna. And I don't know what they call the Inbar entry. Okay, and that's followed by we release when the hips are at the top of the upswing. The feet stall as the hips drive upward into a tight arch. Hyperextend through the shoulders and chest. The chin is tucked in maximum pressure against the bar and that should generate when you release the bar should generate the upward height followed by rotation <clears throat> forward over the bar and flight backward over the bar and then regrasp with the hips above high bar the amplitude deduction for our major releases is up to two tenths for height it is determined by the strength of the upswing and the height of the hips at the point of release if their hips are, are approaching a handstand when they release, they're that much further ahead already. Once they release, they go a little higher and they have maximum height. If they released early on the upswing where the hips are out in front, they have a lot further to travel to get up to that kind of height as if they could have just stayed on and swung their upswing higher. And then also if they release on the front side, they have to use a lot of that energy to move backwards to get on the right side of the bar. USAG does not really have specific guidelines for the height of high bar counter release skills. You'll notice they do talk about it for a Jaeger, a Delchev, and a Genger. They say the hips at high bar level. They don't say that for Tkachev because they have to be above high bar level to do this skill. So FIG does have a definition. If the hips are just above high bar height, just prior to regrasp, no deduction. At high bar height prior to regrasp, it's an 05, and below is 1 to 2. And that is not a perfect definition either, because if she really launches a sky-high release and fails to rotate, she'll end up with a vertical drop and will not be able to grasp the bar until her hips are below it when she can reach between her straddle if she failed to rotate. So we also have the up to one tenth for under rotation. There has to be a balance between height and rotation to properly execute this skill. And there is backward travel that it is required as well, but there's no specific deduction indicating backward travel. Talking about our under rotation, you see the picture in the middle there with the girl with the red leotard. Now her feet are up by her shoulders. She would get the full maximum deduction of one-tenth for under rotation. And the girl in the blue leotard has full extension before she reaches for the bar and she would get no deduction. And so here's a real picture of those two positions. USAG actually describes correct rotation as hips or legs rotate backward to full extension after regrasp. And again, I think that definition is a little bit lacking. It doesn't ask for what kind of angle behind the bar she needs, just that it is backward. 
So if she lets gravity take over and she drops through and she's a little bit behind the bar, who's to say that's not backward extension? FIG has a better de definition, I think, in this case for these type of counter elements. If the feet are behind the shoulders just prior to regrasp, uh, and this is typically the type of position is a good position that on this skill. I kind of cheated when I did this picture here. The girl with good rotation, I really took that out of a, a Jaeger. It's much easier to complete your rotation with a backward angle out of a front salto as opposed to a reverse heck type of element. So this is what you'll expect for a good opening for rotation. And we are going to choose the Tkachev as our element today. Uh, it is the only one that is just a D but it is still by far the most common reverse hecked element that we see today. So let's watch uh, Gabby. Tap on downswing. Kick into a hollow or pike over low bar. Drive opening through shoulders and chest. Feet stall as hips continue to rise into a tight arch. Release and rotate forward with backward flight over high bar. Catch while continuing to open to a stretched position. Okay, very nice. So we are going to use slow motion for all of our release elements. I'm going to show you good, average, and poor examples of each release. And the second time through, I'll stop action and give a breakdown. In this case, we are looking for amplitude of flight and rotation. Release with hips high on upswing. Good height and rotation. Catch with hips above the bar and feet behind the shoulders. Good backward extension. Short upswing early release, some height and rotation, catch with hips about even with the high bar and the feet even with the shoulders, some extension backward, also body shape errors and bent leg. Insufficient upswing, no height, barely skims over high bar, hips well below high bar on regrasp, no rotation, feet in front of shoulders, no backward opening. Okay, so now it's your turn. We're going to do three examples. You'll see them each in slow motion two times, and then I'll follow it with a review. You are to script the element and write um, your amplitude and rotation deductions.
Upswing short. No hip rise. Downward descent backward. Hips below high bar on regrasp. Feet in front of shoulders. Vertical drop. No backward opening. Good height of hips and tight arch on upswing. Good height and rotation. Catch with hips above high bar and feet behind the shoulders. Good extension backward. Very short upswing. No hip rise. Hips barely clear the bar. Regrasp with hips below the bar and feet even with the shoulders. Very little backward extension. Okay, moving on. Our next single bar release is going to be the Jaeger. The Jaeger is a D, whether it's done in a tuck or a straddle position. Uh, we see more pike position Jaegers these days because they are worth an E, but still by far the straddle is the most popular. Let's listen to uh, the technique on Jaeger. Reverse tap over low bar. To a tight arch with heels driving upward, open shoulder angle. Release with feet above horizontal, curl body upward into forward rotation, catch with hips above high bar, and hip extension backward. Okay, very nice. So we're going to have our three examples, and I'm going to talk about amplitude, and I'll talk maybe about the rotation, but I'm not going to indicate rotation deductions. Like I said before, rotation on the front saltos is usually not a very big problem. Slight shoulder angle, but tight arch with heels driving above horizontal. Good height and rotation. Catch slightly above high bar with hip extension backward. Slight arm bend. Somewhat weak drive of backswing. Average height. Catch with hips at high bar height. Good extension backward. Execution errors. Weak drive of backswing, very poor height, minimizing angle of backward extension, hips well below high bar on catch, body position clean and tight. Okay, time for your three examples. Again, you're going to just record the element and give amplitude deduction.
incomplete low backswing, minimal height, hips below high bar on catch and poor backward extension, body shape and execution errors. Pretty good backswing, tight arch, feet at high bar level, good height, hips at high bar level on catch, rotation to good backward extension angle. Weak backswing, poor height, catch with hips below high bar, poor backward extension. Okay, we are now going to transition to high to low bar releases. We're going to talk about the pack. It's becoming more and more popular these days. It is a D. It can come from a support on high bar or from a swing. If it's from a handstand, uh, again, it can be initiated with a plancher pike to decrease the acceleration into the long swing forward, just like we did in the bail. And so here's a picture of the planche or the pike entry. This is perfectly acceptable. Okay, let's look at the technique. Tap to hollow body position over low bar. Begin opening. Release as feet stall and hips continue to rise into tight arch position. Head out for visual of low bar. Reach down for regrasp. Okay, so um, again, we're asking for two tenths in amplitude, but I'm going to take a little license here, and I'm going to say amplitude of technique. We have, for the first time, uh, indicated what our expectation is for the amplitude, and that is that hips are at high bar level. When she releases, her feet are already higher than the high bar, and her hips are pretty close to high bar level. It would be nice that she would continue to rise with her hips a little higher than the high bar, but as far as getting two tenths of amplitude of height, I don't think it's in there. But we also do require that she catches in a definite clear support, not a hang. And if you heard me say that she needs to catch uh, with an open shoulder angle, we're expecting her to be not vertical, but just behind vertical, but somewhere between there and 45 degrees. We did not find that in the code, but if she catches beyond 45 degrees, I think she's going to be in trouble trying to control the kip out of it. So I'm going to call amplitude of technique both of the hip rise and for her ability to catch in a good clear support position that she can possibly work out of it into a stall or something else and definitely not get into trouble with it. Uh, the timing of this skill is really important. If they release too early, they'll get a too much forward travel between the bars, the trajectory will be out over the low bar. She will over rotate and catch with a shoulder angle or bent arms, uh, be unable to control the kip. It may result in a back hip circle or actually a collapse on the bar or hit the floor or fall between the bars. And that's all got to do with a, an early release. I'm going to show you an example of that. I'm sure you've all seen this type of problem in the pack where the travel and rotation get out of control. So what happened here, she released where her feet are, are well below the high bar and her hands are releasing right now. Her trajectory is going to be traveling forward. Her shoulders are past the low bar because of that forward travel, all based on that early release. So that is deadly for that skill. So here will be my examples of good, average, and poor. And we're going to look for up to two tenths for the amplitude of technique. Good tap, visible rise, great body position, good clear support angle.
rather weak tap, release a little early, some rise, but too much rotation and forward travel, failure to control, clear support, and push back into glide. Weak tap, early release, legs stopped too soon, forcing extreme arch, insufficient rise, over rotation, no clear support, many body position errors. Okay, so in your three examples, script the element and record your up to two tenths for amplitude of technique. Good tap, great height, good clear support angle, tight execution, and generally good shape. Poor tap, head out, bad shape. Poor height, legs apart. Over rotation, no support angle, extreme execution errors. Head out early on the tap. Visible rise. Good support angle, generally tight execution, but flexed feet. Okay, so now we are going to move into our low to high bar releases. We're going to do a counter flight element. This is very much like the Takache, except that the release and the action occurs between the bars instead of over the low bar. The entry again is from soul circle, clear underswing, stalter or clear pike in bar. That's that clear pike is an in bar circle. And uh, they're all worth a C. Here are examples of each of those entries. Soul circle. The clear underswing entry, this is Mo. She's the one that originated the skill. Stalter. And watch, here is the clear in bar. You see her feet inside between her arms. Okay, so we are going to use the toe-on entry, which is certainly by far the most common toe shoot that we see. Listen to the technique. Late toe-on. Feet disengage, aiming above high bar, strong backward thrust of the arms. Hips rise near high bar level. Powerful turnover forward while rotating legs backward. Grasp high bar while legs continue backward to fully extended position with hips well behind high bar and feet near low bar. Okay, for our amplitude, it specifies that we want to see the hip rise approaching the level of the high bar. And the under rotation deduction applies again. 
Uh, after the grasping the high bar, the hips and legs must continue to rotate backward to fully extended stretched position. Again, that is the USAG definition, and it is definitely applied here. You want to see that center of gravity well behind the high bar and the feet out toward the low bar. And again, we need to balance the height and rotation, not travel forward. If their trajectory of their feet is toward the high bar or below it, they will have a flat forward trajectory causing them to uh, get too close to the high bar. They'll catch with bent arms and end in a dead hang with no forward swing. I'm going to show you one example. She manages to get out of this, but feet are below the high bar. She travels too close to it. Very often they'll get an extra swing at the bottom of that and have very bent arms on their kip. And also you will all often find them taking another extra swing when they get to the top of the bar. And that was all based on that uh, low trajectory of their flight path. So we are going to see the good average and poor examples and we're going to look for the amplitude of the flight and rotation. Strong opening aiming above high bar. Good hip rise and turnover. Shoulders even with high bar on regrasp. Good extension backward. Opening is not aimed above high bar. Very little hip rise. Shoulders are at high bar level on regress, but too close, resulting in bent arms. Full extension is not achieved until too late. Feet aimed well below high bar, no hip rise. Feet in front of high bar, no rotation or extension backward. Okay, it's your turn for three examples. We script your element and record your amplitude of flight and rotation. Opening is not aimed above high bar. Full extension is never achieved. Very little hip rise and no leg rotation backward. Bent arm catch, vertical hang, no extension backward. Opening is aimed below high bar. Some hip rise, but trajectory is too close to the bar. Bent arm catch, 
vertical drop of hips below the bar, little to no extension backward. Incomplete hip extension. Hips not high bar level. Some extension backward. Clean execution. And our final release of the day is the back circle to handstand with flight to high bar. And the entry can be from sole circle, clear hip circle, stalter circle, or pike in bar circle. They're all worth a D, except the in bar circle is not listed in the code. Here is an example of each of those entries. Toe on entry is called a Maloney. Clear hip is a Shaposhnikova. Stalter entry is a Ray. And again, I don't know the in-bar entry name. But we are going to deal with the uh, Toan Pike Soul Circle entry, uh, the Maloney. It is by far the most popular of these elements. And here is Maloney technique. Late Toan. Dynamic opening of shoulder and hip angles. Release with wrist shift. Weight never settles on top of low bar. Visual of high bar is already established. Reach for grasp with entire body extended at high bar level, no shoulder angle. Pike just enough to clear low bar with feet, drive back swing to horizontal. Okay, so again, we're looking for up to 2 tenths for amplitude. When we come out of the clear hip or the toe on, their hips are fairly close to high bar already. What we really need to see is a rise of the shoulders getting up as high as the hips so that we can get the entire body full extension near high, high bar height with that full open shoulder angle. And if they have that position, then they will be in position to do a, a good reverse tap and really kick the amplitude of the backswing that needs to get up to horizontal for up to one tenth. So those are the two things we'll look for is the amplitude of the flight, getting that full body extension at high bar height, and the up to one tenth for the horizontal backswing. Here are my three examples. Hip rise above high bar height. Body fully extended at high bar level, no shoulder angle. Back swing fully extended at horizontal. Great example. Slight insufficient hip rise. Regrasp below high bar height with shoulder angle. Achieves horizontal backswing by compromising body shape with multiple execution errors. Shoulders never rise to high bar height. Catch beneath high bar with shoulder angle and bent arms. Drops through the bottom unable to generate enough swing for the back swing. Bent arms. Okay, your three examples. You'll be looking for amplitude of flight and amplitude of the back swing.
insufficient hip, and shoulder rise. Catch below high bar level with shoulder angle. Drop vertically through the bottom requiring extreme body position errors to kick back swing to horizontal. Good hip rise, but shoulders fail to reach high bar level. Catch with shoulder angle. Insufficient backswing. Good hip rise. Catch fully extended at high bar level. Backswing above high bar at horizontal. Clean execution. And that's all I have to share with you. Well, Judy, we want to once again thank you for all the hard work that you put into this and uh, for doing it three times for us. We really appreciate it.